Hey everyone, I'm Zach from Action VFX, and today we'll be taking a look at how to get the most out of our large scale dust waves. Let's take a look at the different parts of this shot, and then I'll take you through the process of creating the meteor impacts using our large scale dust waves. Here's the original plate from our friends over at Filmpack. I used a 3D camera tracker to track the shot and create a 3D camera. Then I created two nulls where I want the meteors to strike the ground. Next, I used 3D lights to create the paths for the meteors, and then used Trapcode Particular to create the meteors themselves. Subscribe to get notification for part 2 of this tutorial, where we will be looking at how to create the meteors. Lastly, I added all the large scale dust waves and the extra elements that I used to create the impacts. I'm going to go ahead and delete these impacts, and then we're going to recreate them. First, I'm going to bring in Dust Wave 1 and make it a 3D layer. Since we have lights in this scene, I'm going to have to turn off the Accepts Lights option on these, but we'll go into detail on that in Part 2. I'm also going to turn the Motion Blur on. Next, I will parent these layers to the first null and zero out the position. I'm going to back up in my timeline so I can see when the meteor is striking the ground. This is where I'm going to want my dust wave to start. So I'm going to go ahead and move my dust waves to start at this frame. I'm going to adjust the scale and rotation to my liking. and then adjust the anchor point so that the bottom of the dust wave lines up with our null. I'm also going to change the width scale to a negative value so that the lighting on the dust wave matches the light direction in the plate. I'm also going to add dust wave 8 here and do those same adjustments. This dust wave is going to give us some extra dust moving the same direction as the meteor when it hit the ground. To add to the impact, I'm going to add Exploding Debris Side 2 and Spark Hit Front 4, then position these in 3D space to line up with their impact. I'm also going to pre-comp the spark hit and add a mask so that I can get rid of this bottom area down here. Now that all of our elements are in place, let's rearrange our layers so that the meteor, sparks, and debris are all located in the middle of the dust waves. This is very easy with these new dust waves because where needed, there are separate front and back renders. So here's our front render, and then here's our back render, so if we take off the front we're seeing it cut in half, and this makes it very easy to composite other elements into the center. So now we have our shadow passes, our back of our dust wave, 
and then all of our spark hits and our debris inside the middle of the dust wave. And then here's the front of the dust waves. When we see it all together, we get this awesome look to where everything looks like it's coming out from the inside. I also need to adjust for the front of the dust wave to be above our meteors. So now our meteor is even in the center. I'm also going to move our exploding debris and spark hits up here with the front of my dust waves. Except for the shadow pass, that can go back down here. Having separate renders for the front and back of the dust wave is a huge time saver when compositing multiple elements together. Okay, let's get the elements matching the plate. I'm going to set the shadows blending modes to multiply and their opacity to 90%. Now I'm going to pre-comp all the dust wave renders individually. Let's go on in to the pre-comp for dust wave one front. Inside this pre-comp, I'm going to apply extractor to my dust wave and check the unmold option. I'm also going to apply shift channels and set alpha to full on. Now I can duplicate my layer three times. I will remove the effects from the top layer and set the blending mode to stencil alpha. Then set the blending modes of the bottom three layers to add. In the bottom layer, I need to use extractor to select the main light pass. Then do the same for the next two layers, but set them to the fill light and the rim light passes. Since we are accessing the render passes using Extractor, we are currently working in a linear color space. To get us back out of this linear space, I can add an adjustment layer here, apply the color profile converter, and click Linearize Input. Now we have control over the lighting on the dust wave. I'm going to bring down the intensity of the rim light a bit and boost the levels of the fill light with a curves effect. I could adjust the main light too, but I don't think I need to. Now I'm going to do these same steps for the back of Dust Wave 1 and Dust Wave 8. Now the lighting on the dust wave is looking great, but the colors don't match the plate. To fix this, I can use the colorize option in the hue saturation effect. Now I'm going to fix the shadow color by adding a lumetric color effect and raising the blacks just a bit. Then I'll push a little bit of blue into the midtones and the shadows. I'm also going to add a slight Gaussian blur so that our dust wave is not as sharp and it matches our plate better. Now I can copy these same settings over to the other two dust layers. I'm going to use these same techniques to adjust the exploding debris. For the spark hit, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur and set the blending mode to add. This is going to get a nice overexposed explosion when the meteor strikes the ground. 
I really like how this is looking, but it needs something else to emphasize the impact. Let's add a shock wave. I'll add a new solid and set the resolution to be square. Now let's pre-cut this solid and open it up. Let's add a circle mask to the solid and set some keyframes. This animation is going to need to be pretty fast to sell the shockwave effect. I'm going to use easy ease here on this keyframe so that we get a very quick start and it sort of fades into a slower expansion after frame seven. All right, that's a good start. Let's duplicate this mask and change the blending mode to subtract. Our new mask is going to stay the same, but we're going to need to adjust the first mask. So here on mask one, we can adjust the keyframes again to get a desired result. Yeah, I think this is going to work well. Back in the main comp, I will turn this layer into a 3D layer, pairing it to the null for the dust wave, and zero out the position. If I adjust the orientation so that the shock wave is lying flat on the ground, we'll get the illusion that it's spreading across the ground. I'm going to add a fill effect and select a color from the ground. And since this is a 3D layer, we'll need to turn accepts lights off. I'm going to lower the opacity. And then we'll move it to line up with our explosion. This is a very subtle effect, but it really adds a nice extra punch to it and really sells the effect. And now we have an awesome impact for our meteor striking the ground. From here, I'm going to go ahead and build my impact for the back meteor strike using the ProRes versions of Dust Wave 2 and Dust Wave 7. Since this dust wave is much smaller on screen, I should be able to get away with not adjusting the lighting as I did for this first one. Also, using the ProRes versions will help reduce the render time. In the ProRes versions, you still get the front and the back separate renders and also the shadow render, just like you do in the EXR versions. I'm going to parent these elements to my second null. That's where my other meteor is striking the ground. We'll need to zero out our position. And 
adjust the rotation just a little bit. I'm also going to need to line these up with our other meteor striking the ground. I'll make the same adjustments to these elements as I did for the first dust wave, but with a few changes. The Gaussian blur can be a bit higher on these elements so that they will look to be out of focus as in the plate. I'm also going to add a levels effect to the dust layers to raise the output black value and lower the output white value a little. This technique is known as atmospheric perspective. As an object moves further away from the camera, the appearance of the object changes due to the increase in the amount of atmosphere between the camera and that object. You can see the atmospheric perspective looking at this ground here versus the mountains back here. These mountains look a little bit washed out and have a slight blue tint to them. I'm going to copy these effects over to the other dust layers for that second dust wave. I'm also going to add that spark hit to this dust wave. I'm also going to move the shock wave from the first impact down to the very bottom so that it's underneath pretty much everything in the comp. Duplicate that and use this second one for the second impact. To wrap up this shot, I'm going to go ahead and rename all my dust wave and impact elements so that we have a nice looking comp and everything's organized. I'm also going to do some select color grading, add a little camera shake, and also add some motion blur. And now we have our final shot. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Comment below and let us know what you want to see next. And subscribe to our channel to get notifications for part two. I'm Zach from actionvfx.com. See you next time.